so far we have worked with taking the derivative of an exponential function when the base was e. So when our base was the natural base, e to the u, our derivative rule resulted in e to the u times the derivative of u with respect to x. This video is going to take us through what happens when you have an exponential function, so a variable in the exponent, and the base is something other than e. So taking the derivatives with different bases. We're also going to cover, we learned how to take the derivative of the natural log of u, was equal to 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. Today we're going to talk about what happens when you have a different log base b of u. How do we take the derivative of that? So different bases happening today. You should be able to take the derivative of a logarithm of any base, take the derivative of the exp any exponential, regardless of base. We also will eventually be able to find the antiderivative of an exponential function. That'll be in a separate video. Today we're focused on the derivative part of things. So let's do it. Uh, warm up. Apply logarithmic differentiation. Remember, logarithmic differentiation is using logs to be able to take the derivative. Uh, slash the properties of exponentials to find the derivative. So I'm going to start with this one on the left. And it says I'm supposed to apply logarithmic differentiation. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. The reason why this is helpful to me is now I can swing my u down in front. The natural log of 3 is just a number, nothing to be worried about. Then I'm going to actually do some calculus because it says I'm supposed to find dy dx, so I need to actually take the derivative, which we haven't done yet. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of the natural log of an argument is going to be 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. This one, you can think about it as a product rule, or you can think about it as a constant multiple rule because the natural log of 3 is just a number. I'm going to show the product rule and what I mean by the constant multiple. So first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. This term is going to just go away. So the other way we could have thought about it originally is to say, well, the natural log of 3 is just a constant, so let's just let that hang out there, times the derivative of u, which is du dx. And that's what I got as part of my product rule. Okay, great. I'm almost there. I was supposed to find dy dx, which is here. So the last thing I need to do is multiply both sides by y, which means my final answer is dy dx equals the natural log of 3 times du dx times 3 to the u. And I want to think about rearranging this a little bit for convention's sake, okay, and for helping us see patterns. 3 to the u was my original function. Taking the derivative of u is something I'm used to, right? In exponential, when it was e to the u, it was e to the u times the derivative of u. Well, now it's 3 to the u times the derivative of u, and then I still have this natural log of 3 that I'm adjusting by. So that is my final answer. I have three different things multiplied together. This next one said to use properties of exponentials or change of base. We focused more on properties of exponentials in our class. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 to the y is equal to, these will cancel, u. And now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. I get y times the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of u. Haven't done any calculus yet. I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x. This again, natural log of 3 times something is just the constant hangs out times the derivative of y, or you could product rule and see that one of them will be multiplied by 0, equals, oops, sorry, derivative of the natural log of u, which will be 1 over u times du dx. When I was, again, supposed to solve for dy dx was my goal, I'm almost there, I just need to ditch this natural log of 3. So my dy dx is going to be 1 over u, times du dx times 
1 over, sorry, my pen is doing silly things, 1 over the natural log of 3, because I'm going to divide both sides by the natural log of 3. And I want you to look at some similarities here. When I took the derivative of a natural log, I had 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. When I take the derivative of a log with a base 3, I have my same rule at play here, except I have this extra multiplying by 1 over the natural log of 3. Just like with exponentials, when I had a base of e, my derivative rule was stays the same times the derivative of the exponent. Well, that's true here, except that again, I have this extra multiplying by something with the natural log of the base. So let's generalize. If y equals b to the u, then the derivative of b to the u is itself times the derivative of the exponent times the natural log of the base. The derivative of log base b is going to be 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument times 1 over the natural log of the base. So I want you to think about this. Had this been e to the u, our derivative would be e to the u times the derivative of u with respect to x. And if I apply this rule, the natural log of e just never was there because the natural log of e is 1. So that's why we had this rule in red from before. Okay. Uh, the other side, let me write the derivative on here so we remember. The other one, uh, if I had taken the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of u, I could still use this rule. 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument times 1 over the natural log of the base, except this time my base is e. 1 over 1, you just don't see it. Okay, so we learned the natural bases first, but really the formulas for any base will apply because e is just a number. All right, so what we have now is a set of four problems, and then I'll show answers. Four problems, I'll show answers. I think four problems, and I show answers. So pause the video and try these for yourself. Find the derivative of each function with respect to x. Put a box around your answer. A hint is to make sure that you are using your new rule, which again is the derivative of b to the u with respect to x is b to the u itself times the derivative of the exponent, times the natural log of the base, and then watch out for number four because you need a product rule. Go ahead and pause your video, try these four problems. All right, be mindful that the first one was f, the second one was g, the third one was h, the fourth one was j. So we label our derivatives. We want to make sure we have called them what they're actually supposed to be called, which is f prime, g prime, h prime, and j prime. Um, each one of these is following the rule. So 5 to the x says itself times the derivative of x, which is 1, times the natural log of the base. 5 to the 8x itself times the derivative of the exponent times the natural log of the base. 12 to the 2 minus 3x itself derivative of the exponent, natural log of the base. In this one, I said be careful of the product rules. So first and second. We now have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And in this situation, this is the only thing that's our new rule of 4 to the x technically times 1 times the natural log of 4. All right, four more problems. It says find the derivative of each function with respect to theta. So here we're just trying to get you fluent with some different variables. Box your answer. So each one of these functions, f, g, h, j, are dependent on theta, and we are assuming Theta is our independent variable. Go ahead and pause your video. Try these four problems. Be careful of number 16. Or sorry, 6. It's got a little trick in it. All right, so still using our new rule, right? The derivative of 7 to the theta is itself times the derivative of theta, which would be 1, times the natural log of the base. This one does not need our new rule. This is a power function, not an exponential function, because the variable, theta, is in the base, not in the exponent. Okay, so this is just a little, little test. Make sure you're still paying attention. Uh, for h of theta, we have a product rule going on. So I've got my first times the derivative of the second, plus
plus the second times the derivative of the first. Please note that our new rule is right here. 9 to the 2 theta times the derivative of 2 theta times the natural log of the base. Also, please note that the derivative of sine of 3 theta is here, needing a chain rule. Things are starting to all meld together for us. Number 8, hopefully you took a quotient rule. So we've got low d high minus high d low over low low. This right here is the only part that was new from today. When you take the derivative of 6, six to the theta, that's your new rule showing up. All right, so that was all of our work with exponentials. Last thing then, we've got the four problems that deal with logs of different bases. So pay close attention to what your base is. Um, also consider how you might use log properties on number 11 to help you before you get into too messy of a derivative. So again, apply log properties if you can. Pause your video. Go ahead and try these last four. All right, each one of these was using our new rule of the derivative of a log base b, which is going to be 1 over u times the derivative of u times 1 over the natural log of the base. So I'm actually going to start with number 10 because it has all the parts. So 1 over u times the derivative of u times 1 over the natural log of the base. Number 9, 1 over u times the derivative of u, but that's just 1, uh, times 1 over the natural log of the base. Number 11 is where I suggested using log properties. Notice that this is h of t. I have not done any calculus yet. I'm just expanding some things out. Then I took the derivative here. Now, could you also swing this 7 down before you took the derivative? Yes, absolutely. But remember, log properties, you just need to do enough of them to make your calculus easier. I don't think doing 1 over t to the 7th times 7 t to the 6th is really too bad of a derivative to have to do. But notice again, 1 over the u times the derivative of u times the natural log of the base minus 1 over u times the derivative of u times, oops, there should be a natural log of 12 there. Ah, 1 over natural log of 12. Schwartz, get it together. Something got erased. A mystery. 1 over the natural log of 12. Sorry about that. Hopefully you're paying close attention. Uh, last one then. Product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So again, the derivative of the log of t would be 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument times 1 over the natural log of the base. One last question. What does it take to write to the equation of a tangent line? We need a point and a slope. More specifically, we need the slope at that point. So remember, it's y minus y equals the slope at a point x minus a. So we've got the point a comma f of a, and then our slope is equal to the derivative of f at that input. So we don't want the slope everywhere, we want the slope at one specific point. All right, that's it. In honor of this lesson usually being done sometime in February, a reminder that my love for you is equal to its own slope, aka exponential.